Okay, so let's talk about one last thing that we could do that is going to be separate from this example. So we're done with this particular farming example. Let's talk about another thing that we can do with buffers called multi-distance or multi-ring. Multi-distance or multi-ring buffer is a buffer where you actually have multiple nested buffers around a single feature. multiple nested buffers around a single feature. Right. And so what that looks like diagrammatically, right, is that we would specify, right, a feature, and then we would specify, you know, distance one, distance two, distance three. Right, maybe it's say 75, 150, 250. For a single feature, we have multiple distances. Right, and so if we were the computer executing this, what we would do is we would create right, a buffer 75. Right, we would then create a buffer right at 150. And then finally, right, we would create a buffer at 250. My poor drawing skills aside here, right? And so what you end up with is these concentric rings that almost look like a bullseye, where each feature now has multiple nested buffers. So, the key thing to keep in mind here with multi-distance is you're doing multiple buffers per feature. With variable distances, you're doing different distances for each feature. Multiple distance, multiple distances per feature. Variable distances, one distance per feature, but it doesn't have to be the same for each feature. I know that it can get a little bit confusing because variable distance versus multi-distance, that they sound like they'd be doing the same thing, but they don't. So just kind of keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and quickly take a look at what this would look like if we actually drew it out to scale and kind of throw a little bit of an example behind it. Right. And so what we can do with multiple distances is let's go back to that idea of having the first two, so this is model A and D from our farming example. And we've given the previous estimate to the farmer. The farmer comes back to us and says, oh, that's great. But in reality, right, the, the model one at, at the very least says it's rated to 75, but my personal experience tells me that it's rated to 35. Is there a way that you can see the differences between the two? And that's where we would do a multiple distance, right? Because we have two distances in this case, right? We have the distance that, that, that the machine was rated for, and then we have the distance that the farmer says he's actually experiencing. And so again, if we were the computer executing this, what we would do is we would go 75 feet from A, right? 75 feet from D, then we would go, right, 35 feet right, and we would go 35 feet, right. And so we would end up with this sort of concentric ring bullseye here. Now, what I want to do, I want to hammer the point home here about the difference in the attribute tables. Right, so this is that exact same thing drawn out to scale. Right, so we have as our inputs point A and point D. So that's this is the input table. 
right? So this is A, so this is our first point. This is D, our second point. So these are two of the irrigation systems, right, in, in, our, in our example here. And we have the two distances, distance one for 75 feet and distance two for 35 feet, right? Again, these are two distances per feature. So this is a, because we have two distances, this is a multi-distance buffer because we're specifying two distances per feature. We could have specified three if we wanted to. But the idea is that we're specifying more than one distance per feature. Now, this is the output feature. Or output. Keep things simple. This is the output table. Right, and what you'll notice, the input table, right, had two rows with two distances. The output table has four rows with one distance, right? So each combination became its own row, right? A at 75 feet became X, right? A at 75 feet. A at 35 feet became W, right? A at 35 feet, right? So the A at 35 feet became its own feature, right? The A at 75 feet became its own feature. Right. And because each one of these are are kept separate, right, this is a non-dissolved buffer. Right. Again, because we we're having each buffer ring is its own feature. Actually, let's make let's make it let's make that abundantly clear here. Right. That each buffer ring is its own feature. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to give the opportunity for some review. So let's go ahead and go through a couple of review questions. Um, these review questions are going to be based on your ability to identify the type of buffer given a visualization, a visual representation of the buffer, right? And so just to kind of review the types of buffers, right, there is a single distance, otherwise known sometimes as a simple buffer, right? There is a variable distance, right? And with variable distance, the idea was that each feature can have a different distance. Right. And we talked about the idea of multiple distance. Where each feature has right two or more distances. Right. And then finally we have a dissolved. where each buffer is dissolved into a single feature and overlaps are merged. Right, so again, simple, meaning single distance, nothing's overlapped, or sorry, 
single distance and we allow overlaps, so each resulting buffer ring is its own feature. Then we can have variable distance where we allow each feature to have a different distance. Then we have the multi-distance where we allow each feature to have more than one distance, meaning each feature will produce more than one buffer ring. And then finally, we have the idea of dissolved where we can generate each buffer layer as a single feature and merge any overlaps. And there are reasons why you'd want to do different kinds of buffers. Um, but for now, what I want to focus on is just being able to look at a buffer and kind of tell which category or groups of categories that a buffer falls into. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first review question. So given this buffer here, go ahead and describe it based on the following characteristics. Is it single or variable distance? Is it dissolved or not dissolved? Is it single versus multi? So go ahead, pause the video, take a second to see if you can figure it out, and then we'll come back together to answer it as a group. Okay, so this one's pretty straightforward. Um, the idea here is that, right, all three of these points only have a single circle around them. So that would mean that it is going to be a single distance buffer because we don't have any concentric rings. We can see that the lines here, or the circles here, are all the same distance from their center. So we know that it is a single distance. In this case, it's single or simple. And then because we don't have any overlapping and we don't see that they're being dissolved, we can go ahead and assume that this is a non-dissolved buffer. Right, so this is a single distance, non-dissolved buffer. So let's go ahead and look at another example. Let's go ahead and look at this one. So go ahead, pause the video, and attempt to do the same thing with this buffer. Figure out and describe it based on the characteristics that we've talked about previously. Okay, so this one's a little bit more tricky. Um, let's go ahead and first start by talking about is it a single distance or a multi-distance buffer? Well, when we look at this, we can see that there's only one ring per feature. So we know that it is a single distance buffer in that sense. Now, this part requires a little bit of, of, of careful attention, but if we draw a straight line here, from the point to the edge of its circle, right, what we'll notice here is that these three lines are different sizes, right? These three lines are different sizes. So what that tells us here, right, is that because these are different sizes, the distances used for each feature, right, is different. Meaning that we know that this is a variable distance buffer. Right, and then finally, right, if you're paying close attention, right, I've, I've kind of cheated a little bit by, by drawing it the way that I did, right, but the Right, these circles would continue something like this. Right, but because these overlapping portions have been removed and they've been merged together, right, that indicates to us that this is actually a dissolved buffer. Right, so this would be a, a variable distance right, dissolved buffer. All right, let's go ahead and do one more example. So take a second, think through 
what we see here and what's happening here. Go ahead and pause the video and try to work through how you would describe this buffer. Okay, so the first thing that we might notice is that we have three rings per feature, right? One, two, three rings per feature. And anytime you see multiple distances per buffer or multiple distances per feature, that is an indication that you have a multi-distance buffer. Right, now, if we were to draw a line from the center of the circle or from this from the feature to the to the circle to each circle All right what you would notice here is that these distances right from purple from center to purple and from center to purple are the same Right from center to green, center to green are the same, and from center to white, center to white are the same. That tells us that we're not dealing with variable distances, right? We have multiple distances per feature, but for each distance, they're the same between features. That tells us that we have a single distance buffer in this sense. And then finally, right, we have to talk about whether it's dissolved or not. And the key thing that we're looking for for dissolved is whether or not when, when we would have overlap, whether or not that overlap is retained. All right. And so in this case, right, we can see here that we're clearly merging our dissolves or we're clearly merging our buffers, meaning that our buffers are being dissolved. Right. So this would be a multi-distance. Right. Dissolved buffer. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you can kind of see even without the attribute table, right? If you have the attribute table, this becomes even easier. But without the attribute table, you can kind of see visually what the results of these buffers are going to look like.